times and with the works that is yet to come, we still give Almighty Yahweh all the honor and the praise, for he is truly worthy. I told Yah for you, for each and every one of you that are able to make it out tonight over the roadways, as well as for those of you that join us via the live stream. We do told Yah for your presence, for your prayers, for all the ever so many wonderful calls, the commentary, the ability to simply seek Yahweh and to strive. It is beautiful to know that even in the earth, in the latter days, with all the mean-spiritedness of the world, there are still people that, as commanded, have a mind that desire to walk with Yahweh and to obey. So we told Yah for that. We are kept in a very noteworthy fashion. And when I say that, I simply mean a noteworthy fashion because we desire to walk with Yahweh in a way where our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if those names are written there, then truly it is noteworthy that he would even think upon us. So in that lifetime that we have, we told Yah for that, to just simply be called in the earth from wherever we are, regardless of race or color. With that being said, Israel, let us stand and we'll open tonight in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh, we told you for this blessedness of the day having come to a close and the incoming of the Shabbat. We told you for the precious gift of our lives, our health and strength. Even in the midst of trials and tribulations, we give you all the honor and the praise in sickness and in health. In all manner, Almighty Yahweh, as you have placed us in the earth in the latter days, we do give you all the honor as we ask for your comfort, your encouragement to keep us, to heal us, to be our guide, our teacher, our director, and our motivator. We simply ask that you keep each and every one of us, Abba Yahweh, in the very palm of your hand. Let us not stray out of the path to neither the right hand nor to the left, but to continue to serve you, to love you, to honor you, and to love each other as you have commanded us that we may be able a people that are called and able to stand before your judgment throne without spot, without wrinkle, as well as to be counted worthy to stand in that kingdom age and to teach the greatness of this Torah unto all men and nations that are to come unto you out of such a great tribulation. We ask Abba Yahweh that you remember the elder mothers and fathers, wherever they may be, many that suffer through various sicknesses and levels of diseases and pains and discomforts, be with them as well. Remember the children, Abba Yahweh, some of the youngsters that even are yet to be born. Have mercy upon them because of the evils that are to come upon the face of this earth. All of us as well, Abba Yahweh, that are in between the young and the old, have mercy upon us. Give us a heart and a mind to continue to walk with you and to walk with you in a manner wherein we are in total confidence that you are our redeemer and that the portion of your code is not like unto that of the world, but is made in the express image of your person and totally without fault and any imperfections in this lifetime. We ask you, Abba Yahweh, that as it is written in your word, that it is enough that the student be like the teacher. Help us, Abba Yah, to be exactly like Yahshua. This we simply ask in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Yisrael, you may be seated. Once again, we do total almighty Yah for the preciousness of the gift of life, our health and strength. We total Yah even in the midst of all that, that we are able as his people to make it safely through the work week thus far. We told her, y'all, for that to be delivered, to be able to, even tonight, to stand before you, filling in for Minister Johnson, who's a little under the weather himself tonight, and has been given the ability to stand down, to simply rest up, keep the minister in your prayers as well. Nothing serious. We told her, Abba, y'all, that he's feeling much better than he felt earlier in the week. So we told her, y'all, for his healing. But nevertheless, in this society, I will say concerning men such as Minister Johnson and Deacon Reginald that they labor intensively in the word of Yahweh. And I know for a fact, based upon the revelation of Yahshua, that in a lot of instances, we don't always appreciate the younger men in Almighty Yahweh that are sincere, that do labor. I do say and express as it is written in the Almighty's word that the children of Israel have an intense burden upon them. This is a spiritual battle. This is spiritual warfare. 
and things come upon us to test us and to try us. And we cannot always take these battles lightly, but we have to look at them and look them in the eye for exactly what they are, because Yahweh has said unto us in his word that many are the trials of the righteous, but Yahweh bringeth them out of them all. And we have to bear in mind that this is a tumultuous labor. This is a work. This is a battle. This is a spiritual warfare. And sometimes the spirits do war against our Ruach. And sometimes they appear to win until Abba Yah sends his Malachim to strengthen, to comfort, and to encourage us. So we want to keep things like that in mind so that we be not in despair or without hope. So I do want to say that unto all of Yisrael. Continue to pray for each other, both near and far. Sometimes you don't always know one another. You don't have to know everybody's name. You pray for one another. Abba Yah knows who you're praying for. Abba Yah knows your heart and your mind before you are even able to formulate your own thought. So we have to know that we serve a mighty one like that. We have to serve a true and living Elohim. We have, we have to know that, Yisrael. I told Yah for the gift of life, for the presence of his word in my life and present in my life in such a way without a brag or boast. But if there's anything to brag or boast on, then we all should brag or boast in the simplicity of the fact that we know him. We have to know that. We have to know that we know him. I talk with people from time to time. People, they like to argue. They like to debate. They like to argue the word. His name is not Yahweh. It's Yahweh. It's this. It's that. And all you say is simply, well, you can't prove that. And that shuts everybody down. Because, see, anybody that comes running in this 21st century, if you come running with a bunch of internet research, I'm not going to listen to you. I'll tell you straight out of the gate. I'm not going to listen to that. And the reason why I'm not going to listen to that is because we are commanded in the word of Yahweh to stand in the way and see. He said, and ask for the old path. And when you find it, walk therein. There are a lot of doctrines and a lot of messages that are going forth today that are all 21st century internet based. And because they are 21st century and internet based, you ask them, well, where was this doctrine that you teach 50 years ago? Where was it 100 years ago? Where was it 200 years ago? Let's take, we ain't got to go back 2000 years yet. We cut them off right here at the knees at 200 years. Because they should at least be able to document any and everything they say. Just take it back a good 200 years. If you can take it back a good 200 years, I'll tell you what happened. If you can take it back 200 years, you can get it up off the shores or off the confines of the continental United States. If you can get it up off of these shores, you should be able to take it back to its point of origin. All the way back home where we were taken from as we were scattered and placed into captivity. And I've raised that issue because of the simplicity of the fact that so many people are teaching so many new things. And the scripture says that they will come in the latter days having itching ears. We want to hear a little bit of this, want to hear a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Uh, dear brother, I asked, I asked a lot of time. Don't send me a lot of stuff. Some people send me stuff. Uh, one, one dear brother, I think he just lived for sending me stuff to my phone. And a lot of days I'll just pull it off the Hip, I'll see, oh, him, put it back. I, I won't even look into it. And, and I don't say that in ignorance, but Abba Yah doesn't lead me to look into it. Today I had a little spare time and I perused back through some of the stuff that the brother was sending me, some of the stupidest stuff. Because see, you're not studying the word of Yah, we're just looking at stuff on the internet. We're looking at so much stuff, so many different doctrines. There's no way that the people of Yahweh can learn the word of Yahweh from this messenger on the right. It has the truth. This messenger that's nearby him that's close to the truth. This messenger hereby that's further away from it than the second one is. And then this messenger over here that's further away from it than the third one. And then you got somebody over here that's further away from it. He's a hundred times removed. There's no way that we can learn the truth like that. There is a consistency in the truth and the way in which Almighty Yahweh has held Israel in the palm of his hand to forever guide us to comfort us, and to keep us. I believe I said to you all a few weeks ago that y'all gave me a small understanding into something in which I deal with the younger people and teaching them some things. 
And Yah always brings those things to mind. When I stand before Yisrael and I teach, my mind is on the things in Yahweh's word as seen in the world. A lot of times the things in Yahweh's word are happening and are seen in the world and we don't really see and understand what we're seeing until somebody comes along in the power of the Ruah and says, look at this, this is Yah's word. Then we can see it and or understand it. Sometimes things that are happening in the world that we see daily and don't understand and see it in the word and see it in the word and don't see it in the world. Sometimes we have to deal with it in that concept. This is why a lot of times you'll see me hold up documents. I don't, I don't do the PowerPoint presentation and all that. I'm going to tell you all a little secret about this technology. Sometimes it is better to remain a step or two behind the technology than to always be right there with it. Because the way this thing is moving, I tell you of a truth, many of us that are so sucked into and or caught up with the technology, when the beast system is fully in place, we won't be able to let it go. You hear what I say? I was learning something in the early in the week and the young people, they were teaching me some things and they were slow walking me through the computer system. And I told a y'all for their patience with me. They love and respect the fact that I, I'm not computer savvy. So they were showing me things, how to log in, how to get into this, how to get into that. But I know it in the books and I know where all of the material and the data was. And I was teaching them with a specific level that y'all gave me to show them something. We took them on a field trip today. But all week, I was explaining some things to them, some concepts, and I would stop in the middle of a presentation and go back to the very beginning and would ask them a question concerning it to see if they retained it. And though they semi-retained it and sometimes could or could not relate to it, I did explain by the day of your field trip, if you don't have this now, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how it will all come to your mind. And as you get in the field with me, you'll see all these things that I've talked about. It will come back to you and you'll remember these things and you'll be able to retain it in such a way that you will have learned it while not knowing that you have learned it. The owner of the company says something that I thought was semi-silly. He was explaining to one of the men at the company and he's kind of like a, a, a little embarrassing because the people know that he doesn't know, but he's too ignorant to know that he doesn't know. So the man was explained to him there, well, a lot of this is easy, it's simple, and what is going to happen to you is you'll pick it up before you even know that you're picking it up. And 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 I, I wrote it down real quick. I said, you'll pick it up before you even know you'll pick it up. And without disrespect, I'm thinking to myself, not him. He's too arrogant to learn. He's not going to pick it up. And that made absolutely no sense to me until I actually saw it in motion. And I had to use that analogy to the students to let them know some of this you're going to learn it and pick it up before you even realize that you're learning it and picking it up. And as I took them through the field today and they were learning the things that I had expressed to them and they were mastering it so well, my mind went on to you. Yisrael, the assembly, the body, the people that tune in with us weekly here or any shepherds, wherever you are, you're learning some things that sometimes Sister, I, I won't bother to say her name, but many years ago, there was a, a, a woman in Israel in the early 80s, around 82 or 83. I watched her convert to this way of life. And Elder Johnson was teaching a message. And the people were subtly grumbling. They were fussing. They would have their little rebuttals against the things that the full old man would always say. But she stood up, and this was in her early years in converting to this way of life. And she expressed to them about a course that she had taken and gotten a little card or a little certification and she tucked it away in her wallet and didn't need it anymore, never paid it any attention. But she did stand up as an advocate and she said to the people that what has been said to you, as profound as it is, you may think it's insignificant. You may not think that you need it today, but there will come a day in which it will come up and you will need it. She told them the story about the certification or whatever it was that she had gone through and a particular card or something that she had been given. She had that skill set. And at a job interview, they asked about that. And she said she hadn't thought about it until then. And she dug in a purse to show that she had that certification or whatever it was she needed. And that was what brought her over the finish line to get hired for that particular job. And she used that example for them. And I say that to Israel tonight because 
If you seek Yahweh's word from this channel, or wherever you may learn the best of your information from, strive to retain it. It's no, it's no harm to play back. You are, the blessedness of what you all have in the 21st century is being able to go back to a message, rewind something, to pause something, to go back through an entire channel with close to 800 messages and peruse through the titles based upon something you may have forgotten. You may have viewed it and missed something that was said that in your second or third listen, you now catch something. You, that is the beauty of Abba Yahweh even allowing these type of instruments to be utilized for the advancing of his word. That is a blessing, Yisrael. I want to talk to you tonight about a blessing that a lot of times people take for granted. People tell me this all the time. I hear it all the time. I don't, I don't diss it, diss it. But a lot of times I don't have that kind of time to hear it. But, but a lot of people, everybody always saying, yeah, Yahweh told me do this. He told me, he told me buy those cucumbers over there. Uh, 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 Yahweh told me get those shoes down there. Get the. How is Yahweh in every little teeny tiny detail in your life so much so that our living just does not get any better? I tell people all the time, you know, stop talking so much, calm down, wait on Yahweh, be quiet. And then I go back and I find in the word where the messengers in conversation with Yahweh realize, nah, I think I better just shut up. I'm going to pull out one. I'm going to show you one tonight where brother was talking to Yahweh as meek and as humble as this man was. In all of his perfection, his perfection before Yahweh was nothing. And when he realized that, I'll repeat it again. He simply said, no, nah, you know what? Mm. I'm going to put my hand on my mouth. I'm going to shut up. I ain't said nothing. That's how we need to be. Women, tell the truth. Sometimes a woman, things be going wrong, and a man say, what's wrong? What do you say? Nothing. But it's the way you say nothing. That lets a man know if he's thinking. That there's something wrong, right? Nothing. So you sure? It's fine. <laughs> Not throwing any stone. Just speaking in general, all right? I don't want the whoopings after the message. Just saying. That's just the way it is. Am I correct? We can't do that with Yahweh. We got to really go to Abba Yahweh to know and to understand that none of us have the level of perfection we think we have. We all would do well to just simply beg that we be saved. You hear me? We do well that we just simply beg to be redeemed. Pray to make it in. A young man came to me today. He had a little problem on the job. And uh, his check wasn't right. His little hours were off by a little bit of something. I couldn't get back to the office. Certain things I just don't believe in doing after certain hours on preparation day. I, I'm not going to work through that. And he was a little upset about it, and he really did need his money. And uh, someone I had loaned some money to a couple of weeks back didn't pay it back to me at the time they said they would. I didn't even regard it. I paid it no mind. This morning, they gave me that amount of money back. And here's the irony. The young man, as I was leaving, trying to make it in to get situated for tonight, told me about that. And you could hear the pain in his voice and I, I wrote it down I took a note of it detail and I said I'll check in on it on Monday morning and he was explaining how he really wanted his money he needed to do this that and the other and he wanted to do it today because he knew if he didn't do it today he wouldn't have a chance to do it no more because he's always working throughout the course of the week and I said um, well I'm gonna take all your information right now and I'll make certain I get on that and he said he said I appreciate you because I know if anybody can help you always gonna help he said you help everybody you always do that man but just that one thing if you could call them now that would really help me and as i uh, dug in my pocket to i forgot what i was looking for pull out my pocket the money that someone had loaned me i mean that i had loaned someone that they paid back this morning at 7 30 was exactly what he needed i hadn't had it in all this time so i wouldn't miss it now that I did have it, considering I didn't get it when I thought I would get it, it didn't hurt me. I gave that to him. And he stood there 
and he cried. And y'all know me, I'm a bit of a crybaby myself, right? And he stood there and he cried in his, his little glasses. He has uh, impaired vision a little bit, so his glasses are a little thickened. But that was what really did it. And I said, hey, man, look, in humor, I said, don't stand here and cry, man, because I don't want no tears on my shirt, man. I'm headed home right now. So you do me a favor before they lock the gate. Go over there and you wash your glasses. Get all the dust off your glasses. Go home with it, if, it with your vision straight. But don't stand here and cry because if you get your tears on my shirt, I'm going to have to put the truck in park and get out and fight you. Just a little humor to mess with him. And he couldn't stop crying because he was just so elated that somebody cared enough to do that for him. And the way I see it is just, no, look, don't, don't get me wrong. I, 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 I'm no Rockefeller, so I can't go around handing out money all the time. That, that, that's it. But I look at it like this. The pieces of paper have no pictures on them of anybody that I have any affinity for. So to get it up off of me, to pay somebody that says I owe them a bill or this or that, or to help somebody that's struggling or whatever, to get it up off of me, I've come to learn in my lifetime, it's no big bother to me. That woman there has everything she needs. I have here everything that I need as Abba Yah sees fit. And I admit it, I'm no Rockefeller. And to just be able to do that, to alleviate somebody's problem, made me think how all of us as Israel feels every time Yahshua says, whatsoever you ask the Abba in my name, I will do it. This man being the express image of his person. Talk about credibility. He has a credibility with Yahweh that if you ask in his name, he said, I will do it because I know you believe in my Abba because he sent me and you believe in me. Whatsoever you ask, I will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to be healed, ask him. You need housing, ask him. You need jobs, ask him. We have sons and daughters that are in these prison houses. We need them released, ask him. We need to be cleansed, ask him. Whatsoever we ask, we have to ask him. It is written, we have not because we ask not. You hear me? A lot of times I've seen so many people in Israel just go astray sometimes because they don't have specific things and we forsake Yahweh in order to go and work in the field to acquire the things that we need. No, 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 no. We know we need to work. We know we need the money to pay the bills, to do the basic necessities, but we need salvation first. So we got to put our salvation first and then all the other things. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. You hear me? All these things shall be added unto you. I'm talking with an owner of a mine. Listen, listen, hear what I say. He owns a mine. He's pulling things and resources out of the earth. A mine. His family's owned this mine for a couple hundred years. Hear me on this point. They pull things out of the earth. Fill dirt and different things. A hole in the ground where all the resources seem to just keep coming to you for close to 200 years a hole in the ground as if it's growing are you hearing me and this is somebody that does not know Yahweh and yet our blessings come from above where there is no limit. Are you hearing me? This is a rich man. He said, man, we got to go to lunch one day. He said, it's on me, my treat. And I said, <laughs> I know good well it's your treat. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't paying for lunch for you. And just humor. I, I get to talk to people. and, and I admit it, y'all. Sometimes I get to slide my little digs in too. I, I no, hey, but come on now. The scripture says, "He that giveth money to the rich shall surely come to want." Yes, sir. That's in the book. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So now you got you got millions or uh, whatever you got. I'm over here with pennies. Thank you. I, I was I was trying to find a fancy word for it, but pennies. Somebody tell me how to say pennies in Hebrew real quick. All right. But anyway, you on millions. I'm over here on pennies. And I'm treating. 
I'll tell you what we do have that's free, and we can treat you to that. The word says freely you receive, freely give. You right? Yes, Come on, let's get into this. I want to talk to you tonight about the answer of Yahweh. See, a lot of times people tell me, Yahweh told me this, Yahweh told me that, Yahweh told me, told me, told me, Yahweh told me, get these tennis shoes, Yahweh told me, get this one here, Yahweh told me, get this. Now, let's not doubt that Yahweh told these people some things. But Yahweh would also tell us how to live. Yahweh would also tell us sometimes when we're wrong. He would also tell us when to be quiet. He would also tell us how to pray. He would also tell us how to help one another. He ain't just telling us all the good stuff and then the bad stuff for some reason or not, he forget and stop talking. Okay? Yahweh, uh, I ain't buying it. We as the people of Yahweh, we got to know. See, Yahweh teach us things about ourselves. We, a lot of times, we would not like ourselves. In fact, speaking of that, he did say to Israel in the book of Ezekiel that when this is all over with, and I bring all your sins before your mind, you shall look upon yourself, and you shall loathe yourselves for all that you've done. Come on now. You hear what I say? It's coming. This is why, right now, while we have the chance, come before him meekly, so that we are the persona that he's really calling for. You hear what I say? We were out in the fields of dance with the young people and I watched how they were not timid, but they looked to me for the lead when we were in the field. When I had it set up weeks in advance that everybody whose site we would come to, you get 15 or 20 minutes, you talk to them, you open up to them, you teach them. And they all said at the end of the trip today, they said they knew their stuff. They teach, but they 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 don't do it like you. You 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 a bricklayer. You say you specialize in that, but you knew his trade better than he did. And you opened it up, and you did this, you did that. And Mr. DJ, I know God is with you. Now that's how she could only articulate it, and that for us is without a brag or boast. We know. That Yahweh is with us. But we don't get bragging rights. We have sharing rights. You understand? Yes, sir. So that when we tell people of the wonderful works of Yahweh, he bears witness with us through our ruach, through our kindness, through our approach, through our walk, through our interactions with people in the world because we are truly in the world but not of the world. Make sense yet? Listen to this man's conversation. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2. I like to say his name because certain Hebrew words and names got to be said with the proper accentuation upon it. Because, see, we use words in a daily society and we don't know the depth of what we're saying. Sometimes you are, oh, you're just a kook. But this man's name, Habakkuk, and the beauty of what he was to live up to, you don't take it lightly. We say things like, oh, you're always goofing off. But the word is not goofing off in the scriptures. As you look in the lost books and they teach you about laughing and giggling excessively in the house of Yahweh. The word was goofar. You hear me? So somebody who couldn't say your language or couldn't connect with you. So you're goofing off. That's not it. It's a goofar. It, it, the, the definitions are synonyms. But it's just somebody who don't know your language, don't have a connection with it. Twist your words around. like they, Sort of like they do in the court, right? Where were you on the night of the 33rd? I was nowhere. Now, your answer to that question is just as sophisticated as their question. Your answer is just as stupid as their question. But that ain't what they're looking for. They want to find a lie or a fault, right? So where were you again on the 33rd of September? And you say, I was nowhere. Where were you? The average person get tripped up on it because if my, last time I checked, September ain't had 33 days. All right? Right. Just checking because that's the type of world we in, okay? Listen to this man's conversation with Yahweh. And let's walk back and forth through the scriptures into his conversation and watch how his conversation interlocks and overlaps with other messengers of Yahweh's conversation so as to draw a point. Right? Yahweh told me to do this. He told me to do that. He told me, he told me, he told me. Here's a man that says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Now, here's a man 
that knew righteousness, but also knew that no matter how great of a messenger of Yahweh he was, he also knew that he would be reproved. And he knew, I better have the proper answer because any old answer ain't going to do towards Yahweh. Now I want to go back to somebody who gave any old answer to Yahweh. And it was a wicked answer. It was a stupid answer. And I know this is going to offend some people. But it was a smart ass answer. And it was the wrong way to answer Yahweh. And this person still to this day has to one day get up and give an account for what he said. Okay? Yahweh asked him, where's your brother? And he said plain, as if to imply, I don't know what you mean. Am I his keeper? You see, that's what we would call today. That's a smart aleck answer. You're smart talking the wrong one. And yet the punishment that Abba Yah placed upon that man's life, oh, it ain't over. See, people, I said that before the man said, man, all them years, if it ain't over, man, it'll never be over. You don't understand how deep you were and how right you were. You're right. It ain't going to never be over because what he did set the chain and the precedent for everyone that takes place in this earth from that one. Okay? Think about it. The spirit of murder is nothing to play with. We got nine-year-olds out here now murdering people. Nine years old, murdering. And the wicked laws of the land say you can't touch him. Isn't that amazing? Now, now I said this today, and this kind of shocked some people. I don't care. It was the truth. I said, I pray y'all would send along a destroyer and bust him up just as he did to her. He does not deserve to live with the, with the wickedness and the way, the malicious intent with what he did. He deserves nothing less. And that's law. That's Yahweh's law. Situations emerge where scripture literally calls for an eye for an eye. Scripture literally teaches us sometimes a thing happens that's so outlandish that it angers families and the blood runs hot. That is in the book. But you see, we always want to make an excuse for our sin. We always want to, uh, oh man, we have no idea what we're saying. Now they say you can't charge him because he's not 10 years of age. So people talking to me about it, that yeah, he's, he's under 10, so they can't charge him with murder or anything. So I was explaining to some people, I said, well, you know what, hold now. Let me explain something about the law that you need to understand. Brother said, well, I've been in almost every jail in this state. I said, okay, well, let me make a point that you obviously didn't learn. And that's probably why you kept going back and forth to jails. If you're going to break the law, at least know the law. And he looked at me kind of stupid. But here was my point. I said, the statute of limitations on murder never runs out. They can't charge him because he's under 10. That don't mean they can't wait and come back. You understand? All they got to do is keep the, act, keep the investigation active. No closed case. What do you, what you call, Make it a, a, a cold case. You don't know Abba Yahweh. Okay, they talk about charging the family member and all this and that. The owner of the gun and all that. Okay, now that's not actual true justice there. That family member may have owned it, but that family member didn't go pull that trigger. That evil nine-year-old murderer did, okay? We can't make no excuses for ourselves, our people, our sins, and nobody. Don't make no excuses for your mother, for your father, for your brother. Don't make no excuses for your politicians, for your governors, for your business community. Don't make excuses for anybody. Sin is sin. And if we're going to talk about anything, sin and crime are synonymous, okay? We need to know things like that. Here, a man of Yahweh said, I'll stand upon my watch. And see what I shall answer when I am reproved. A lot of times, I, I know we, I've seen it over the years. You can't really reprove some people. Some people, I, I see this one a lot too. People like to text you or chat rooms and all that. See, behind a keyboard, you're anonymous and you're always right. See, behind a keyboard, you're tough. But face-to-face -face or verbally where you get to speak and I listen and I listen and you speak and vice versa. Now, the toughness tends to go away. Nothing 
more sincere than a face-to-face -face confrontation. People think that the word confrontation always means a physical fight. No, confrontation just means you, you lay out your point, I lay out my point. People don't understand the word argument doesn't always mean a fuss and a fight. They use that word in the collegiate level, say, well, present for your argument. Doesn't mean you're arguing, it means this is your side of the discussion. So we have been misplayed on definitive so often that we really don't even define things anymore. Whatever society says it is, that's what we tend to go off of. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Listen to this. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 40, real quick. See, we, we as Israel, we need to take more notes on things like this. A lot of times people are just so busy going through the scripture, finding things that make them feel good and make them feel righteous. But when we find stuff that make us feel bad because we're actually in sin, now we just want to duck over that. Well, I don't, I don't need to look at that. That don't apply to me. It all applies to us. It applies to you. It applies to me. It applies to us. Deacon taught a message a few uh, last Shabbat. The word of Yahweh hits on us all. And it certainly does. Hits on us all. Moreover, the word of Yahweh, moreover, pardon me, Yahweh answered Ezob and said, Shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him? See, this is people today. They, they'll say, Yahweh told me. Yahweh sent me to this assembly. Yahweh showed me this channel, right? That's what they say. But then they'll get there and start instructing the ones that Abba Yah sent to instruct the people. Now, that don't mean we are above reproach. That's not what we're saying. We are just saying sometimes a teacher has a teaching style as the instrument that only they could get across at that appointed time. Okay? Everything you learned in the kindergarten, that kindergarten teacher got it across to you. And obviously, you come up out of that kindergarten, you went on to the first grade. Am I correct? Ain't that how it went? Unless any of you, anybody here still stuck in kindergarten after 15, 20, 30 years? Anybody? Everybody made it through, right? Yeah. Okay, you did something right to get up, to get through that. They said, now, look, look, come on now, little Johnny. Come on now. You done failed uh, 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 99 of these tests. Look, we'll let you go. You just got to get this one right. You get this one right, we're going to pass you to the first grade. You done failed 99. You say, you know what? I'm determined now I'm going to make it. So you pass that one. That yeah, whole school lit up, right? Now you're going to the first grade. Those 99 tests behind you now, some reason or another, they ended up in the dumpster. Nobody ever saw them. They went on in the landfill. But now, little Johnny, where you at? First grade. Now, it works like that sometimes. Okay? And we're not knocking them. Just general reference. Okay? Anybody out there named Johnny listening to this channel? Not, not, not personal. That's, that was the TV commercial. Why little Johnny can't read. So, we're, we're, we're switching to Boo Boo or Moogie or... or or Andy, or Matthew, or, or, or Franklin, we'll, we'll pick a name, okay? Yahweh said, shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth Yahweh, let him answer it. Then Ehob answered Yahweh and said, behold, I am vile. What shall I answer you? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. No, nah, I'll shut up. Nah. Now, it's interesting when a person put their hand over their mouth because that's a signal. I mean, if you ever study body language, that's a signal because you want to say something. That not only now do you realize that you have the power to just shut your mouth, but you seek to reinforce it. Okay? That's, that's, a, that's a signal. Some things in life are, are, are just body gestures and languages that people just... Can't get around. I was talking to a man a couple weeks ago about the name of Yahweh. He arguing, talking about the Lord and all this other stuff. So I threw some questions at him. So I said, well, do me a favor. Say the word Lord in Hebrew for me. Now, he couldn't. But I watched his body language. So when I said, say the word Lord in Hebrew for me, what's the first thing you think he did? He looked up. That's the first thing he did. Now, you got to understand the spiritual connotation behind this. Even in their own psychology book, they'll tell you this. When hit with a question that a person doesn't have an answer for, chances are they look up. That's that's a spiritual thing. Uh, uh, help me. You got that? Yes, sir. Hit them with something that they're ashamed of. And I immediately says, oh, so you can't. Is that it? What do you think he did? He looked straight down. 
Now, that ain't taking a whole lot of discernment. I just knew and understood enough about Bible. He looked straight to the ground. So I said, look at me, man. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. And he looked. I said, you ready for this? Just clear your mind. Are you ready for this? The sincerity in his eyes was like, yeah. And you know what I told him? You looked up because you really were looking for some help. You thought the answer was coming and you didn't have it. When I told you that you didn't know it and thus proved to you you didn't know, you looked down and you looked down in shame. But now, truthfully realizing you don't know, you're able to look straight at me. And you know what he said? Well, I'll be damned. Words that people don't want us to use. But you know what I said? If you don't repent, yes, you will. And I proceeded to explain why we use the name Yahweh. And the man said, well, I learned something. I have a sense of humor. And from time to time, I have to use it just to ease the tension of whipping people along the way. So I said, I got this duct tape here. Would you like a piece? He said, what do you mean? I said, see, the next time you encounter somebody that knows a little something that you know they know and somebody told you that they know, but you go chest out trying to browbeat them and prove to them you know when you don't know, you'd be better off if you went to them with duct tape on your mouth than have your mouth wide open and have no answer to come out. And my man was like. So while he stood there shaking his head, rubber, you, see, when you get people like that, your exit has to be dramatic if you're goofy like me. So uh, while he was, I walked away. You understand? See, too many words kill the effect. Okay? Always remember that. Too many words kill the effect of the lesson. All right? It's like Kung Fu. David Carradine used to be getting taught by a little old man. He could never figure it out. And little old man always said, uh, uh, uh. enough, grasshopper. Meaning, that's the end of the lesson. You didn't get the point, figure it out later. Okay? We have to learn. If you watch Yahshua, that's how Yahshua taught those people sometimes. He spoke a thing to them in parables. And then he kept on moving. We don't understand today. We don't understand how Yahweh's wisdom comes to us like that. Because so many times, we don't understand what we think we understand. So he says, once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yeah, twice, but I will proceed no further. Some of us don't have enough juice to stop. At least this man had an understanding. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, you know what, Yahweh, you are, let me shut up. And when he stopped talking, guess what happened? Then Yahweh started talking. Right? Here's the word, then. Right after verse 5, he said, but I will proceed, what? No further. no further, meaning I'll shut up. It says, then answered Yahweh unto Eo out of the whirlwind and said, gird up down thy loins like a man. I will demand of you and declare thou unto me. Will you also disannul my judgment? Will thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? You have some people that think like that and don't realize they think like that. Okay, there are some of us as Israel that are so self-righteous, we don't know. Stop thinking like that. Turn up your loins now like a man. Some translations, if you look at it proper, it does not say a man. It says a geber. This is a, uh, this is a different type of man, and this is a deeply spiritual man this ain't a buffoon now okay a lot of times our poor little brothers they be talking some trash man <laughs> see we play too much sometimes as men at a moment when we need to be serious now we clown here he's telling him don't come to me like a clown you go like a deeply spiritual man ought to Okay, this is the Europeans' contribution to our understanding of the word. Because we're looking at it just as good up now like a man. But when you start looking at those older levels of the scrolls, and a lot of people are now translating scriptures with Hebrew right there in the book. So I, I challenge a lot of our Hebrew brothers, if you all can really read it, then get into the definition of some of these words sometimes, because it will help you better understand what you're reading. Correct? Wait a minute, let me see if I got this straight. What was the question that Philip 
toes to the Ethiopian eunuch. Anybody remember that? Thank you. He says, do you understand what you're reading? What was his response to him? He says, how can I accept some man teach me? You understand? They got to be sent by Yahweh. They have to be. And in order to be sent by Yahweh, they can be sent and we still not believe them. Now this is where your role comes in. Because you do have to try the spirit. But you're trying the spirit don't mean you're going to sit there and box with them and match wits with them. Now, come on with that now, okay? Try the spirit means compare it. Compare what he's saying. Compare how he's living with what is said and what we're commanded to do. You understand? A lot of times we don't do that because in the latter day, everybody got the book. Everybody's an expert. Come to the name Tuesday, September 33rd. Wednesday, September 34th. Boom. They are bishop. Whatever that is. And if that brings confusion to your mind, that's the point. Because that's the state of mind that they are in. They're knowledgeable now. You got so-called Hebrews around calling themselves bishop. And you got other Hebrews around that won't say nothing to them. What are we playing chess now with the word of y'all? Uh, give me a, a rook for two bishops. Give me this. Uh, come on now. You don't find it nowhere in the Torah. But that's, that's us. Catholicism and all this stuff rolled in one. You know, you might well just go ahead on and go out and recruit and put, put a bunch of little boys in the place. If you're going that far, I know people ain't going to like that. Hell, Johnson. You know, some people fold up at the least little thing that their little pristine ears can. Ah, oh, did he just say that? No, was it true? See, we don't like a lot of truth. I know us now. Tell me I'm lying. You know us. We don't like a lot of truth. We'll take some. But when that truth get a little too close to home now, you know how everybody, they, the, the woman said earlier today, well, everybody, everybody got a little faggy in the family somewhere. Everybody got a dyke or something somewhere. I say, everybody ain't always got that. Uh, speak for yourself. Now, I say, in your family, is it you? Now, that came out before I could stop it. But still, I stood behind it. I said, don't, don't throw that out of every family because some families are striving to live right and some are, like the scripture says, some do the things that are in the law without knowledge of the law. That don't mean they are law unto themselves. But some people, some, some people don't play that. So I asked, I said, well, if that's really the case now, who is it in your family? Is it you? And everybody else around heard the conversation. They started laughing. But I was like, I kind of didn't mean it that way, but I was thinking it. So it came out and I, I'm a man. I went with it. So I waited on the answer. She said, no, nah, no, nah, it ain't me. I'm just saying. I said, okay, well, let's do this. How close in your family is the person to you? Oh, no, nah, I'm not sort of like that. I'm just, I said, oh, now you distanced yourself. Are you saying it's wrong? Well, well, why do you know it's wrong? I said, well, you were just justifying it. Which is it? Is it right or is it wrong? Because see, in this society, they just pushing it. Hunting for your children after the cartoons got it in and everything going. Your children ain't safe now. You, man, you better off if all your wallpaper was the Torah. You, you, I'm telling you what I know. They ain't safe with nothing now. You got to guard them. You got to watch what they do. If they got to go into these little hell holes called schools, you got to debrief them every day. What you learn today? What they do today? Let me see that homework. Let me look at that book. Don't just dump them off, okay? They're not trash from the back of a dump truck. Okay? You must guard them. You got to watch what they're being taught. This is a wicked society. So now, here's a man having a conversation with Yahweh. Once Yahweh got him to shut up, here's a beautiful point being made. Canst thou an arm like Yahweh? Or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Remember what we said last week in the word? How the people heard the voice of Yahweh from the heavens. And when the director of this whole thing starts to speak then will the credits roll then does the music play man y'all ain't seen nothing like this you ain't seen nothing like this alright Joe Carter had a, a picture on his social media page of a storm rolling through where a photographer took a picture of this storm 
I ain't never in my life seen no clouds like that. You can see the clouds with the dark blue at the bottom, the bright orange bursting through in the middle with some gold at the top, a little gray on the side. And you look at this and say, now you see, you're going to see more and more of these types of signs in this earth because things are coming now that the world has yet to understand. They can keep on acting like these things are anomalies and all this other stuff. It's all in his word. But you can't get us to be quiet long enough to hear it. The answer of Yahweh. Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency and array thyself with kabod and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of your wrath and behold everyone that is proud and abase him. Bear down. Look on every soul that is proud and bring him low and track down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto you that thine own right hand can save you. See how y'all would talk to him? Just comparing all the things in this universe that he and he alone can do. And he asked a mere man, who was a righteous man? You do it. You in your state? You're in your affairs, you're in your suffering, you're in your sickness, but hold now. Are you going to instruct me? And what did the man say? Let me shut my mouth. I'm going to tell you all, it's so beautiful to just be quiet and listen to Yahweh or listen for the voice of Yahweh. To really listen. Sometimes, oh man. Mm. I ain't even going to tell it. Never mind. I'll tell it later, later date, later time. I ain't even going to bring it up. But yet it is a witness, okay? So let's go back to Habakkuk. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets, that he may run that readeth it. Remember that? Yahweh told the little messenger, Write this down. I got something to tell you. Write it down. Write it upon tablets so that all that read it will run. When they run, they're running to me. As they're running, they're running to obey me. As they're running to obey me, they're striving for the salvation of their soul. They will get it right if you tell it right and write it and make it plain. Or in a sense, that we have to preach it and make it plain. Right? Let's go to a messenger of Yahweh who picked up on this very trend of being told, write it and make it plain. Let's go to Revelations 14, 9. I want y'all, I want y'all to hear this now. Because if you're obeying what Yahweh told the prophet Habakkuk to say, here is the end result of your obeying this. Let me read this again before I go. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets, that he may run. That readeth it. Now I'm running to Revelations 14, verse 9 through 13. Listen to this. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the Kodesh Malachim and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Calm down. That's the equivalent of saying, here is the patience of the Kedushim. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Yahshua. You get it? In other words, calm down. Because if anybody worship this beast, if anybody does all this stuff that this beast is demanding, you're going to suffer forever and ever. Wait a minute. He told Habakkuk, who said, let me shut up to see what Yahweh will say to me. When he shut up, Yahweh said, you write the vision, you make it plain upon tables, so he that readeth may run. Okay, as we read this, we realize a global system is coming. We now have to run to Yahweh. 
We have to calm down. We got to stop talking in order to hear Yahweh. Because in the process of Yahweh telling us how he's going to pay our enemies off, you got to be patient when their system comes online. You run to me. Let them run to the beast. You run to me. Are y'all hearing this? Here is the patience of the Kedusha. In other words, calm down. You just got to wait a little while. Calm down. Let me tell y'all something. What, quick question. Watch this. When did they first declare the pandemic had really hit? When they both got knowledge of what happened? Okay, one says March 2020. Anybody else? Thank you. Remember, they named it COVID-19, not COVID-20. So somewhere around December was when they really knew what was going on. They really started telling people that they knew. So they named it 19. Okay, but what year is it now? See how quick the time has passed? So if y'all were hastening the time, if we trust him like we ought to, even in the three and a half years of tribulation, it's seven but three and a half is mild in comparison to the final three and a half. With Yahweh hastening the time, and he telling you be patient for a reason, you got to trust him. Then don't take three and a half years, no time to go past. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Y'all follow me? Here is the patience of the Kedusha, meaning right here. Yahweh's going to pay them. They are not getting away. They are not getting away. Watch this. This little raggedy white woman right here. You, you did something and you're still in the earth today, still running around, still being a nuisance by just simply breathing. And if that sounds mean or nasty to any of you all, I will not apologize for it. You, you're mean for simply still breathing. Listen to this. A grand jury in Mississippi declined to indict a white woman whose accusation against Emmett Till began a chain of events that led to his kidnapping and brutal killing. In June, an arrest warrant from 1955 charging Carolyn Bryant Donham with Till's kidnapping was unearthed in a courthouse basement in Greenwood, Mississippi. The discovery led his family to press for fresh action in a decades-long case. The grand jury in LaFour County considered charges of both kidnapping and manslaughter, according to the district court's attorney's office for the Fourth Circuit Court of Mississippi. After hearing more than <clears throat> seven hours of testimony from witnesses with direct knowledge about the case and the investigators that investigated this case, the grand jury determined that there was not sufficient evidence to indict Donham, the office said Tuesday. Till was kidnapped, tortured, and murdered in northern Mississippi County in the summer of 1955 after Miss Donham accused the 14-year-old black boy of whistling at or flirting with her inside a store in Money, Mississippi, an action that defied the racist codes of the era. In other words, he blowing a kiss at her, which they say he never did. But it was an action that defied the racist code. Don't you be blowing no kiss at. Uh, but didn't she write a book? Yeah, but the book won't. That's the interesting thing about writing the book. The book is scheduled to be released only upon her demise. But they got the information. Right. But she ain't, they ain't going to release the book until she die. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to tell them what the confession going to be. See how you hold it out? Now, That's Emmett it. Till's mother wrote a book or had ghost written a book and didn't live to receive a dime of the money. Isn't that sad? Little white man came, ghost wrote the book with her. He be, he reaping all the benefits. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. So, 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 so now here's my point. If it ain't over for Cain, it ain't over what make her think it's over for her? No. The jury that said, nah, we ain't going through with it. Let me say it again. The statute of limitations on murder never runs out. See, see, these are people that believe in Jesus. And these are people that think they've done no wrong. You, listen, uh, you all get offended at me for saying this all you want. I deal with and interact with people of all nationalities, day in and day out. And I'm going to tell you, there's one thing I do. So if you're ever in my presence, know for certain, L. Johnson was trying to spirit on me. I certainly am. 
I don't care who I'm around every day of my life. If I got a split second and I'm around them, trust me, I always try to understand who or what I'm dealing with. There's a mindset in the people that rule this world. You have something fundamentally wrong with you when no matter what goes down, you are always right and refuse to look at yourself. But people get offended when we preach this. But yet this is sitting in the book. The scripture tell us about people who slay my people. That's what y'all would say. They slay my people and hold themselves not guilty. I want to hear you tell me who you think that's talking about. See, you got racist dogs like Fox 45 every day. Same story. Squeegee, 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 squeegee. Oh, he took somebody's phone and paid himself $2,500. Now I want to know what jackass pulls up at the light. And the squeezy squirts Windex on his window and wipes it. And you, well, I ain't got no money. What's your cash at? Oh, give me your phone. Here, let me put it in. Come on now. See, who, who is that stupid? Why don't you just hand them your wallet? Here, take out of there whatever you need. See, these stories are, see, whenever they're ready to attack a people, you have to dehumanize them. Especially their strength. You have to dehumanize their strength. Make them an animal. Make them a beast. Make them mean. Whatever. Because it justifies you when you hate them and you're ready to kill them. You must understand that. It's American policy. That's why they got to dehumanize you. Now it's your children. So don't nobody say about the white men panhandling and begging. Out there with the squeegee. They always become invisible when the camera around. Understand? Yeah, I Anyway. His death helped ignite the civil rights movement, and you ain't got proper civil rights yet. Nope. Miss Donham was never arrested or charged with a crime in connection with Till's murder. See, on the ABC Evening News the other night, they were talking about the children that were arrested. The courthouse that arrested them children, now I forget what that city was, where that judge charged the children with a crime. You know what the crime was? Being eyewitnesses to a fist fight. Can you imagine that? We leaving out of here and somebody across the street fighting. So they come and they arrest them for fighting. But now we leaving and we going home and we happen to be leaving at the time they fight. Then you stop surround and lock all us up because you say we're eyewitnesses to it. Did we do a fight? Did we throw a punch? Did we? This is what they did. The black children. And ABC Evening News ran that just the other night. See, if y'all don't step in and help us, we have no help. I'm not buying it. All this stuff that these people do, and nobody want to preach about that. Everybody want to keep preaching and arguing with them. I don't believe in arguing with them. I don't have no whole lot to say. I'm telling you straight out the gate. I don't have no whole lot to say. Because every nationality on the face of this earth, all you got to do is watch them. They think they're better than us. Field trip today, little man out there on the machine, they wanted to talk with him and get some questions and things going. He turned his back to us. The little white man came up and started talking to the students and instructed them, talk beautifully with them, talk to them about me and the different things about it, and said he wanted to go down there and talk to the man. Then now, because the little white man said it, now the man ready to talk to the students and everything. All of a sudden, now you want to show him some attention and everything. I said, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's go this way. Thank you. And I took them that way. No, we're not going to talk. You, you try to damn this to ignore us. And I want you to understand, I accept it. And I receive it. But fair exchange is no robbery. That's why Yahweh's law says, they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressor. This is the only way they're going to learn. I'm telling you what I know. This is the only way they're going to learn. They have to be taken into captivity in the kingdom under Yahshua. Ain't no, oh, uh, you're going to vote your way in and get in there and you're going to buy up the kingdom and keep on with the same old wicked stuff. I will say it whether you're offended or not. Your ass is going into captivity. You've done Yahweh's people wrong. And somebody better stand up and declare it. See, we got all that mouth. But when it comes to stuff like that, we get quiet. We get quiet. So what did I say? He says here, this is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the testimony of Yahshua and the faith of Yahshua. He told them, write it. Because when people read it, they'll know there's no other recourse but to run to Yahweh. But if you look at the next verse carefully, he backs up what Yahweh told Habakkuk to write. 
he backs him up. He says, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in Yahweh from here on out. Let's put it that way so everybody understand. From henceforth, right? Yeah, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. That's the same verse Yahweh Baruch me to put the notes to for a song the other day. That verse right there. Y'all gonna sing it as soon as I'm able to teach it to you. You go, remember the first time you ever heard me sing that? I'll tell you where it was. July the 8th, 1998. Remember it now? And if you don't, I'll leave it right there. I sang that. And it didn't dawn on me. Here we are now. 24 years later. Y'all may give me the very notes to it. Not only did I sing it, but now I got the musical notes to it. We got to learn Yahweh's word, man. Even our deliverance songs, even our redemption songs. I said last week, I'll say it again. Those that Yahweh deliver from that, they have some overcoming to do. And when they overcome, they have a redemption song to sing. Right now, you and I have a redemption song to sing because we are alive and we are in this earth able to sing praises unto his Kodesh name. And a lot of times we just so broke down, so burdened down, we really can't hear nobody call just like we couldn't hear Father Moshe say unto us that deliverance had come because we were so beat down so downtrodden for anguish of spirit. Sometimes you got to let the job go. Sometimes you got to let the bills go. So what? Look, check this out. You got to learn how to reverse certain things. You, me, him, her, us, them. You have to learn how to stop stressing over bills. How you do that, L. Johnson? Real simple. You can't pay what you don't have. Now, somebody structured a society where it violates Yahweh's word for us. It says to owe no man anything but to love one another. Yahweh structured it. He ain't structured society so you around 30 years paying for no house. Y'all ain't structured no society where you around paying ground rent on your house, but somebody else own land. You keep on own. Y'all ain't structured society so you can be charging your brothers and sisters excessive interest rates and all this other stuff, okay? Y'all ain't structured life so you selling water and different things that are freely given unto people. So now, here we are in a society where we're taught to just work, 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 and stress when you can't pay me. Well, wait a minute now. You set this system up so that I'm in debt to you. But the scripture does say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. Now, check this out. If I'm in debt to anybody and I ain't got the money to pay you, check this out. I forgive you for putting me in debt. But you better know and understand I'm going to forgive myself because I don't have it to pay you. So there it is, the end of that. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And think about what I just said now because many people go to grave over stress. Because you can't pay. I had a bill collector call me years ago about a bill. Yeah, Mr. John, you ain't paid this and that. I mean, talk rough to me. And you all know me. I have a sense of humor. So I said, well, hold now. You got my address and everything down there? Yeah, I got it. I said, well, good. Come on to my house and roll the mattress back. All that you find, we're going to split 50-50. Until then, get the hell off my phone. Click. I don't know how they took it on that end. It was pretty, pretty funny to me. I know it stopped the collection calls. Okay, I'm just, just a little helping hand in case you're stressing over the bills. Come on, you, you want another one? Here's a good one for all bill collectors. So look, why are you harassing me? You working, you can't be making much more per hour than I am. Why don't you hang up the phone and call yourself? I'm sure you owe somebody. Is your house paid off? How much you owe on your car? Well, call yourself and press yourself for the money too. Come on, fair exchange is no robbery. If you're doing it to me, then it's good to do to you. Okay? I'm just... Now watch I get a letter next week. Somebody, Elder Johnson, now look, enough is enough. I lost my damn car because of you. I ain't telling you not to pay. I'm saying, I'm telling you how to not stress. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to 
Yahweh know your little heart. Sometimes that's why we just so stressed out in there. He know you really do intend to pay. But yet you went in and bought the, the machine, the automobile, the car, or whatever you're making payments on. You went in to buy it with good intention. And you know what? Somebody sold it to you that had bad intention because they intended to rob you. That's why they charge you such an excessive interest rate. Now tell me I'm lying. They intended to rob you, right? Now you got trapped. And most of the time, it really don't dawn on you until you get out the door and get where you're going, right? Ain't, ain't it funny how this spirit always hit you after you leave? You say, mm, I should have bought that one. Or, mm, I shouldn't even bought this today. Or I should have. Wait. Ah. It's always after the fact, right? I told you all where you get robbed and they give you a signal that they just got you. Coming out the dealership, all of the lots out the dealership, they dip as soon as you come off the lot, right? And let you, as soon as you turn, make that right or left turn, you come out the dealership, what's first thing the car do? Boop, boop. It dip. It's a subtle reminder. Ha! Got you. The price and the value just dropped. Anyway. Just, just think about that next time you leave the gas station and you boop, boop. $40 get you what? Three gallons? You just, they just got you. Hey, think about it. You, you all don't know these people in this society. Anyway, let's go back. So everybody understand that. Y'all clear on that? He told them to write because they are Baruch when they die in y'all from here on out that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. That's why he told them, write the vision, make it plain, so that he that readeth may run. If they run to me, they are Baruch. And when they die in me, their works will follow them. They will get up because they obeyed me. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. And though it tarry, wait for it. Because it shall surely come. It will not Carry, or it will not linger. It will not delay. I say to you, dear brother, you're the youngest in the house. I say to you, this verse says, though it tarry, wait for it. If I ain't around when it come and you are older than you are now, wait for it. You understand me? You trust me now. It's coming. And you got to say to yourself daily, I know he going to come for me. You hear me? I say that to you as a young man. I say that to all the young men and the young women out there. All the little sons and little daughters of Yahweh. If we as the elder generation are not here when Yahweh bring it to the final leg, you wait for it. Because though it's terrible right now, though it take a little while, it's coming. And you must have confidence to know he's coming for me. You have to be so spectacular to Yahweh. He going to stop the whole world for you. For his children. Do you understand me? Yes, Come on, man. We don't have no idea of the value that's placed upon us. Now, you talk about a heavy interest rate. Y'all, we're going to charge a profound interest rate for what has been done to his children. Somebody has hell to pay. You understand? Yes, you are the most precious people in all the earth. And this is what I suggest to all of you. Stay just as meek as you are right now. And just patiently wait on him. Remember what Yahshua told us? He said, in your patience, possess ye your soul. Meaning, calm down. Don't do nothing to cause you to lose your soul. Calm down. Am I making sense yet? Yes, sir. Dear daughter of y'all, sent this little keychain. Little keychain says, uh, I don't have that one. Wrong one. Anyway, little keychain says, uh, calm down and wait on Yahweh. That's what the keychain said. I told y'all for that. That is such a beautiful reminder. As often as I speak and I teach, I tell you all, calm down. Sometimes brothers and sisters, they'll text me or email me and send messages back. And they'll throw my words back at me. And somebody texted me a few weeks ago and it was a message. And it was something in the message they said and they reminded me. And they said, consider it done. And I say that a lot. People ask for prayer and different things. Oh, John, can you pray for me on this? Can you pray for me on that? And my response is yes, or I will, or whatever. And I always say, consider it done. That has a dual meaning. Yes, I'll pray for you. You pray too. And consider it done. Ask for the things you need in the name of Yahshua. Because he said, and he can't. Remember, remember now, Yahweh spoke to us. By two unchangeable things in which it was impossible for him to lie. 
So if he said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. Y'all hear me? You hear me? You hear me? You got that? You got it? Anybody got it? You got it, brother? Got it, got it. You at home, you got that? He said, whatsoever you ask. Then we got to ask, knowing we ain't got no selfish parent. We ain't got no parent that's on a drinking binge. We ain't got no parent that won't share. He sent his son, who was like his abba. He said, if you ask, I will do it. I'm going to ask for no crazy stuff now. Oh, really? Oh, y'all, can you give me a billion dollars? Come on now, cut the foolishness now. Come on now. We're talking about the things that pertain to salvation. However, I guess I better clear this up. In the event you need finances to do the things that you have to do that are not some old outlandish. We ain't talking about no payment on no Bentley and all of that. And you living in a little shack or something. We ain't talking about nothing silly like that. We're just simply saying, even if you need the finances to do specific things that are life sustaining, life related, uh, salvation related, you have to still ask. Okay. We got to do that. Let's move on real quickly here. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, he said, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Now, I'm tracing where Yahweh kept saying things. And then other messengers, sometimes several hundred years apart, were saying the same thing. This is the consistency of Yahweh's word. Okay? Yahweh ain't like... The, the preachers of this world today, they stand and say this and then lie, then jump over there and say that and lie, then do this or do that. Yahweh has consistency in his word. His Torah cannot lie to us, and he does not want lying shepherds to emerge and just will not tell us the truth. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Watch this. What did he say? Though it tarry, wait for it. That's what he said? Wait for it, right? Jeremiah 30. Listen to this. Therefore, all they that devour you shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, I like that verse there. Let me back up a little bit. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil you shall be a spoil. And all they that pray upon thee will I give for a prey. Isn't it funny how crime rates are rising now against people who committed crimes against us? Suddenly now crimes are happening. Oh, this shouldn't be happening. Oh, this is. Well, you, you got to look at the news a little differently sometimes. You say, okay, wait a minute now. What happened that caused that to come upon you? Because see, when things happen to us, we stop and we say, what happened that caused that? To come upon us. See, I get sick of people with the news story. I watched the news yesterday. I don't know if you caught this or not. They were talking about uh, uh, an organization here in Baltimore, for example, that's raising funds. And what they did was they did a 24-hour call. And in the 24-hour call, they was asking people to make donations to the organization. And they said, in 24 hours, we raised $50,000. We did this, we did that. And this year, we're going for 48 hours. And uh, we expect to raise $200,000. Okay. I won't knock it for whatever reason. Anyway, it's to go to help families buy housing, get school material for children or whatever and all the different things. And I watched Denise Coke and the new little lady. <laughs> trying to find a polite way to say this. I'm just going to say it. See, People of the day in the world are just so hypersexualized. Everybody want to be with somebody. So now we're just procreating, like Jeremiah 25 says, all these mingled people. So I don't know the lady is, uh, she appears to be part Hispanic, part Asian, part African American, or part something. But when you look at her, it's almost like, you know, the 3D thing on the TV screen where you wiggle it and the image be moving. Or well, when you look at her, you, you don't know what you... I mean, you could literally get seasick. She on Channel 13. You Because cause you, you'd be like, wait a minute. Will you hold still? Because what nationality is that? So anyway, I just stopped watching every time the camera zeroed in. I wouldn't look at her because I was getting dizzy trying to figure out what's her nationality. But 
The funny part was Denise Coke, the little white news reporter, who, when she was closing out on the store, she said, and when is this happening again? And she gave it a date. So, oh, that's just, oh, it's, it's amazing. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. But you could take a story on pets at the zoo or at the fish store and put the same exact line in there and get the same weight and relevancy. So they talk about us almost like we're plants or animals or something. And I was like, you know, am I reading too much into this? Or is this really, really what's happening? See, I remember the works of Arnold Torian B and others, South African historian who admitted when they got into South Africa and ran into us and saw us there, they said, well, we see the natives as fauna and flora. We don't see them as inhabitants of the land. We see them as trees and animals, as plant life and animals, just walking and talking. That's what he said. So when she did that yesterday, I was like, why does every story about us if it ain't a bad story, why does it always have to be a pity story? Oh, the poor black people. What day are they raising this money again? I think I'll take a trip down there and I'll buy a ticket and go see them. That type of mentality. I know, I tell y'all watch the news, then I come here and tell y'all about the news, how bad and depressing it is. Uh, I know, it's almost like I'm sending y'all conflicting me. Anyway, maybe I need to just stop watching the news. I watch it in my house, it's impossible. We, we watch the news, we pay attention. But anyway. You all gonna relate to our our, our our redemption song one day. You gonna really relate to it because we really do need to be redeemed out of y'all hand because this is crazy. Commercial, real quick. I don't care what nobody say. This society is folding up. And see, this society is folding in ways that a lot of people are not looking for. You have to read Revelations 18 over and over and over and over like you read the scripture period. Periodically, go in the book and find the different stuff. Read it. If you don't understand, that's all right. You can call me or shoot me a text or email. And all. We'll do the best we can to help you. We'll teach on what have you. But you need to be paying attention. In the paper the other day was a story about microchips. The shortage of microchips in America. But they was breaking it down in print in a way where they didn't say this on the news. That's why I read the newspaper. The paper says stuff that it ain't saying. In other words, the news is talking, oh, yeah, they're not making enough chips. Uh, uh, eventually, we're going to get around. We're going to need some chips. And on to the next story. Any blood and guts? Yeah, two people got shot. Anyway, in the paper, the story went real deep. And it was explaining the stupidity of trying to beef with China right now when you need them. And because you need them and they are struggling with chips too, then they're going to do what they do and they ain't going to sell us no chips that we need. So the battle to get microchips to run our society, to sell our cars and to do the other stuff is going to be prolonged so that possibly inside of the next three years, if you think it's bad now, hold on, it's only going to get worse for us. So I was like, wait a minute, here we go again. Another one of the 28 items that's mentioned in Revelation 18, that if it's so hard to get, it's so hard to sell. And the book says no man buys their merchandise anymore. Well, you can flip that two ways. If they decide on the world stage to boycott you, then no man is buying your merchandise anymore. And also, if Yahweh fix you so that you cannot manufacture and produce the material that you are used to making money out of, guess what? You're right back where you started from. No man buyeth your merchandise anymore. So y'all's people got to really be watching. I want to bring, remind me to bring the article tomorrow about the long reach of the pandemic. This one I got to bring in for the children. I need to remind them what they're saying now, that the pandemic and the shutdown is going to have effects on your children from kindergartners up to everybody that's in school because it's going to have some dramatic effects on them well into adulthood. That's some heavy drama. Somebody that say they know Yahweh got to be able to see it and got to see into what it means in order to guide Yisrael. My father said years ago that Yahweh told him, I'm going to let the world know one day who I sent and who I didn't send. And this is where the rubber hits the road, baby. Because now as messengers of Yahweh, we can read the book all day. You better have a right and exact interpretation. You better have a revelation. You better have an understanding. Otherwise, any and everybody can hold a book. You can train a monkey to hold a book. But now, to explain this to Yahweh's people, 
and to guide us through the promised land out of this hellhole to guide Yahweh's people, somebody going to have to have some long-term vision. And it's going to take more than one shepherd because the scripture does tell us that the day shall come that the watchmen in Yisrael mm, I'm talking to you all from a chapter. And then I look down and my page is open to what I'm giving a quote to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 31 6 says, and this is what I was giving a say. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, let us go up to Zion, unto Yahweh our Elohim. So he's got to put it into the hearts and minds of the shepherds in a unified call. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Though they may never know one another, though they may be scattered in every city in America, they may be small like us. They may be 10 times larger than us. They may be 10 times smaller than us. He'll put that rock upon them all so that they all have the same mind and say, come on, y'all. Let's go. We're going to go to Yahweh's house. And in the process of your travels, you'll run into one another. Hey, man, what y'all doing? Where y'all going? Pastor said, let's go such such a place. The other said this, that, and other. You're going to meet up. You're coming up out of there. Do you hear me? Somebody got to know. Now, let me not stand and say, hey, it's me. I know. Uh, it's not what I'm saying. I, I know this. See, being on a government watch list, y'all done push me. You done push me to the point where without showing off, I'm going to come out the gate on you. Because if you're looking for something, I'm going to give you what you're looking for. You're watching to see if the messengers of Yahweh really have the power of Yahweh upon them. So I say to you, you better not touch me. Hallelujah. I guarantee hell will break loose. Because I'm praying that Yahweh bust down on every federal agent anywhere in the world that feel like killing me will solve your problem. Damn every one of you. Hallelujah. Somebody got to stand and declare it. And you cannot be scared. Hallelujah. My heart ain't beating fast. I ain't afraid. And I've been through enough of my lifetime where some stuff don't scare me. And seeing some things in my lifetime. But I've also seen the face of Yahweh. And I ain't backing up off of what I saw. I lived in a house up in Edmondson Village years ago. And I went through a little trial and a tribulation, but Yahweh brought relief. And one night, whether wake or sleep, I'm not attempting to copy the Apostle Paul, but this is the truth. One night, whether wake or sleep, I do not understand. I always use this phrase to tell it because that's the size of what I saw. Ford makes a van called the Econoline. It's a rather big van. It's a huge van. And I had that house and that front bedroom in that house was huge. And I was in the bed. And as I rolled over and I awakened, I saw this huge face. Like it had just come through the ceiling. Like it had just transfigured. And I saw what Daniel saw. I saw like a whited afro, whatever you call it, whited hair. And it just looked down on me. With what was a... Hmm. You are one of them type of looks. Not a, ha, my boy. It was enough to get my attention. And I know that while I laid there and I looked up at it, I prayed that Abba Yahweh would simply have mercy upon me. I know what I saw that night. And I never forgot that. When I read in Daniel, he says he saw his face and the head of his hair were white like wool. I know what I saw. Can't nobody choose me. I don't smoke no reefer. I don't drink. I don't do no drugs. You ain't gonna tell me I was hallucinating. I know what I saw. I know from years of careful study that one thing that will get you put on the government watch list is simply saying, Almighty Yahweh is black. Saying that will get you put on every global watch list there is in the face of this earth. So I'm on record tonight. 940, 920, whatever time it is. What the 945? 946. Oh. I'm on record. I'm saying it. And I ain't backing up off. That's why the devils get mad when they jump on the channel because you bring up color. Oh, the Bible doesn't teach color. Oh, it doesn't. I tell you what you do. Prove to me that it don't teach color. First, this is how you prove it. 
print one that ain't got a color on it. That's my challenge. Print me a colorless Torah. Do that. Come out with a cover that ain't got no color to it whatsoever. Come out with one. You do that and I, I, I'll yield to you. Now watch some old idiot. Go and try to create a, a fiberglass see-through page, but you're still stupid because even the color of the page now is going to come through black and white. We're going to be right back to where we started, arguing our point. So Yahweh's people, they don't believe. Let's do this because tonight probably going to be a cliffhanger for y'all. Uh, this is a hot one, but guess what? If I don't finish it, it'll be all right. I mean, can y'all make it through tonight? Can y'all make it through the night if I don't finish it? Say, yeah, we can make it. Yes, we can make it. That's how my little grandson do when I tell him stuff. He says, okay. That's all right. Y'all was coming for us, okay? He's coming. And sometimes we're saddened by it. We'll say, okay. Because you don't want to get up Monday. Go deal with the oppressor. I have to pay that mortgage, that high car note, that high gas, that high food price. I know. We don't want to get up and deal with them Monday. It should buy. That's why. Come on, tell you. That's why we all fellowship like we do on the Shabbat. Because we don't have nobody but each other. You don't have nobody but each other. Come on. You can work all week. You spend more hours at the job than you do your own home. But pretty much, you get on the Shabbat. See, it's the only time we got some people with some peace, some sanity. You understand? Tell you. Come on. You wake up Tuesday. And you're already tired for Friday. You're like, man, come on, man. I can't make that. I'm already tired for Friday. Mm. But when that Friday evening roll around, you get that burst of it. Ha! Here comes Shabbat. And when I tell people, no, nah, I cranked the motor. I ain't turning back. Oh, I ain't getting out, checking nothing. I don't want to hear about nothing. I've cranked the motor because my intentions are to go home, to get cleansed, to come to the Bayet of Yahweh. We sing that little song here. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the bed of Yah. That is so beautiful. You should be glad. Somebody, come on, man, let's go to this hymn of Yah. Come on, let's go down there and see Big Reggie. Come on, y'all, let's, let's go down there and see Mr. Johnson. Now, look, 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 look. I put them two first because I know anybody, anybody rushing can I ain't see me. People be like, I can't stand his ass. Yeah, I said it. That's what they say. Yeah? They say that about me, Lanta. They put it under their breath. I can't stand this. And that's all right. Because I'm going to tell you what happened. They'll hear me preach. They'll hear me deliver what thus saith Yahweh. And they don't like me. And then they get right down the road a day or two later. And Yahweh make it materialize. And the very one that they can't stand is the one y'all would bring to their mind. And then they say, yeah, but he was right. And the devil jump on him. Call him, cuss him out. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I, that doesn't bother me. Here is what Yahweh said for Israel. 30 and 16. For I will restore hell, verse 17. Unto thee, and heal thee of thy wounds, saith Yahweh. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. That's how they mock us today. Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, meaning I'll bring it to an end again in proper time. And have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner of it. You want to know what the manner of it is? You go to Ezekiel 43, verse 7. He lays out what the manner of Yahweh's palace is going to be. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. So long, Planned Parenthood. You ain't cutting us down. Yahweh say he's going to multiply us, and we shall not be few. Hallelujah. And I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. Y'all yeah. think it's funny? Keep on with your little white right wing racism or your left wing racism or your chicken wing racism. I don't matter. Keep on with it all. Y'all were going to bust you from start to finish, and you ain't going to stop it. You can tell the country's folding up, though. They don't know what to do. 
You, never in the history of the country have they ever raided the house of a president, dead or alive. You can tell them, look, they look, they ready to make the bullets fly any minute now. You run up in the man house and all the other little hillbillies in the woods get mad. Oh, damn it. Get the donations going. We got to put him back in. Well, look at the one that's in there. What he doing? Riding the bike, falling over. Tripping over the dog. Think about it. All kind of stuff happening. I think Cat Williams explained them best. So you all ain't getting but so much out of the president. The man's 96 years old. He said, what do you expect from a man like that? All he done been through. The man's 97 years old. Y'all keep on making all these excessive demands on the man. You don't understand who you're dealing with. The man is 98 years old. And he said, well, you know, by the time he get finished speaking and talking, the man will be 120. But his point was, the man ain't all there anyway. And ain't nothing been there or been all there since George Washington. It just had to spend its time out. And Yama's people are witnessing now the unfolding of some melodrama that the world has never before seen. This thing folding up like a cheap piece of luggage. You ever had that luggage man with the springs on it where you better get your fingers out the way quick or it snap your fingers off? You ever had suitcases and stuff like that? That's how America folding up like a snapping turtle. They pull out so it's folding, y'all, and we're just not paying it any attention. We, I hope it don't. All right. You be like Jesse Jackson for us all. Tell him I keep hope alive. Jesse, where he at? Saying, is he saying that now? And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me? Said Yahweh. Have you engaged your heart to approach Yahweh? That's what he said. Who has who set itself right to approach me? And you shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. Behold. The whirlwind of Yahweh goes forth with fury. A continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it. And until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it. We gonna, people right now, they try to act like this ain't Yahweh's word. You give a little more time. You're going to think about Yahweh's word. Why do all of the hurricanes that start, what they call hurricane season, why do all of them start right off the Gold Coast of Africa, right where you picked us up and come right on across mm -hmm. that, that ocean and sweep all down on America? It's following what Yahweh said. Yeah. This is the path you took when you brought us here. Yeah. It go all down them little islands, man, yeah. flood them all out, mess them all up. They still won't turn to y'all down there with the voodoo, the voodoo, the hoodoo, all this other stuff going on. And, and it's not a joke. They're into it. Voodoo, voodoo, and hoodoo. My father said that in the 70s, and we laughed. We thought that was funny. Daddy, make that up. Voodoo, voodoo, hoodoo. Uh, look it up. Now, you know you crazy as hell. When the religion you into already sound goofy and crazy as all outdoors, and then you keep on with these wicked, silly little variations on the name of What's the difference between voodoo and voodoo? What do you do? You understand? Um, play on words, just making it sound stupid. But if it's just organized devil worship, is it stupid to Yahweh? Yes. And yet, we don't get no better. The 12 tribe charts got them all down there. Oh, those are the Levites. They're this, that, and that. Well, then turn to Yahweh, Levi. What is the problem, Levi? We down there still call them Jehovah. All this other, anything to not say Yahweh. Anything. That's the world now. Anything to not say Yahweh. So that's what mess with people. That's what make you mad. Me saying this. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. That's what make you mad. Hallelujah. Yahweh. But that sets people off. You don't like it? Get off the channel. That's all it is to that. Go find the Lord. But you're going to pay for it. Just know for certain. So as Yahweh said to Israel, in the latter days, you will consider this. 
Behold, his soul is lifted up. It's not right on him. But the just shall live by faith. The Sadiq shall live by faith. He said he's coming to get you, right? Yes. I'm going to close on this scripture right here. Revelation 14, 12. He warns us about the soul that is lifted up. It's not upright in him. Don't be so high-minded, so proud. But the Sadiq shall live by faith. When you look at Revelations 14, very carefully, what was that, verse 8 I started at early? You start seeing the mark of the beast and all the stuff coming, and y'all were warning you not to participate in it, not to become a part of it. But you hold on to me. I'm going to pay them. If any man was, he, whatever it is, it's going to anger y'all. was so bad when he burned them, their scent, their stench, their smoke is going up forever and ever. And he's telling you, you be patient, even if you die. Last week, storm came through here and knocked the tree down. Tree branch was down. I came here early in the day. The tree branch was right out there in front of the sanctuary. I did what I did in here, left and went on home. I come back later that evening, the tree branch was gone. They done got it up and chopped it up and made mulch out and went on about their business. But all the other trees everywhere else was all down. See how y'all would protect this little bear? He made the, get that up. So to prevent the tree from falling over or anything of that nature, I came yesterday. The tree was out, blooming, the branches, everything. Y'all seen the tree tonight? Y'all pay attention? Anybody pay attention? You mean y'all want pay? You mean y'all want past that tree and ain't pay that tree no more? Oh, cut every branch down. Just just lop the bough, as the scripture says. Hey, cut it all. The tree is bald headed. Not a leaf. Wow. Didn't y'all be saying the word that the bowels, he will lop the bowels? Yes, Come on, we don't understand what it means. All the ones that's on top, cut them off, yes, cut them down. Yes, I looked at the tree, I said, wow, when they do that? I was just here yesterday. Wow, when they do that? It's ball cleaned up, ain't a leaf nowhere to be found. Got every twig, everything that fell, got it. Look at it when you go out there tonight. Shaved it. It's like a man that shaved off his beard. You, you're going to notice. It's a man, we... Why he look so funny? His hair gone. So they didn't shave the poor thing. And I look at it and say, you wait till y'all would get this shaving, this ruling elite, like he intends to do. He told us, this is your patience. So here we find, again, the messenger said, the just shall live by faith. I'm going to cut this off right here. Cliffhanger. I already know what I'm going to teach tomorrow. Now, y'all will let me know. You come back, pick up on part two. The answer of Yahweh. What was I saying? People always say, Yahweh said this. Yahweh said that. Yahweh said, said, said. Listen, when Yahweh get to talking to Israel as the nation that he wants to talk to, first and foremost, he's going to rebuke. He's going to chastise. He's going to correct us all. Everything ain't going to always be sweet. Wasn't he yoke upright before him? But yet he reminded him, come on now, go on, cast your anger bra, cast down those that are sinners, rebuke them, speak from the voice of heaven. If you can do any of that, then I'll acknowledge that you are upright. And this was a just man. So then some of us, we just waking up, we just come to the knowledge of Yahweh last week, just come to the knowledge of it a year ago, two, three years ago. We going at the messengers, the shepherds, rebuking them and chastising them. Oh man, come on, you got pork chops in your house. Children ain't living right. Your wife fights you at any given moment. Oh, man. Yeah. This is the type of stuff we got going on. But we will say, he told me. He who? Jack Daniels? He who? Captain Morgan? He who? Bohemian? Or National Bowl? Or whatever it is. They, they still make that? Anybody know? People are like, oh, Don, what is that? I'm like, no, no, not the bohemian. Anyway, let, let me get up off of it. People say, oh, I knew he was a drinker. No, I pay attention to everything. And by paying attention to everything, you get on people's nerves. I got on the young people's nerves early today. I made them cut the radio off. They had something playing on the radio. And, of course, I 
it's like going to a restaurant, you get an appetizer before you eat, right? So they was getting into the groove of it. And I come out with this appetizer. I spoiled it. I told, y'all can't listen to that with me. Come on, man. Yeah, look, man. No, nah, no, nah, listen. Listen to what they saying. And I broke down the lyrics to the song, right? And the young girl said, how you know that's what they saying? We be listening to them. We ain't even know that. I said, no, no, y'all be listening at it. If you were listening to it, you'd hear the vulgarity behind it, and you'd look at me like, oh, no, I ain't listening to that. She said, I never played it in. Well, can I play it now? Because I want to hear it again, just to hear what you just said they said. I said, go ahead. She played it, and she was like, mm, I'm going to be sick to my stomach now. I'm like, oh, thought those man ain't know nothing. But anyway, it was a teaching moment. They looked up and realized, uh, the music today is so disrespectful. Well, that's because you ain't listen to the right music. The right music. I was in here last Shabbat. Service was over. Everything was peaceful. I sat over there checking my eyelids. And you all came in to rehearse. I couldn't even get up to join in. But it just sounded so beautiful. It was so peaceful. I didn't need to get up. I just sat there and just rested, listening to you all sing. Always put forth your best voice for Almighty Yahweh. The beauty of the vocal cords that he put within each of you, trust me on this. You have not hit the pinnacle of the perfection of what he made them for. You hear me? You haven't hit it yet. Fight for it. Strive for it. Because one day, Yahweh's word says that he's going to rejoice over you with singing. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Yahweh rejoice over you with singing. You ain't heard a voice in all the universe until you hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh sing. Now let me see if I got this straight. That is written in the scriptures. He will rejoice over you with singing. We just went over it last week where he will speak to Israel and the world from the heavens. And I think Yahanan said he heard the sound of harpers harping with their harps. That's just the introduction to the greatest voice in all the universe. And before we can hear the song, we've got to hear the writer of the song. Remember what he said about the writer? What did he say about him? He said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. We want to hear the singing. We got to hear the son first. Let's rest on that, Yisrael. How about that? We go ahead on home tonight. Can we do that? Keep each and every one in mind. Keep all of Israel in mind, those that are both near and far, small and great, rich and poor. Keep each other in mind and may Abba Yah's precious mercy never depart from your presence. That's a, that's a powerful prayer. Let me say it real slow. May his merciful thoughts towards us never depart from your presence. Think about that. It means even when you die, wherever you're scattered, may he always be with your presence. That's the only thing going to bring you back. Let's stand. I love Yahweh. I don't know about nobody else. I love Yahweh. Hallelujah. I love you all too. Abba Yahweh, please, we beg of you in the precious name of Yahshua that you have mercy upon us. Count us worthy, Abba Yahweh, in these last and extremely evil days. If by chance we have wronged or hurt or offended anyone, we ask that you place it upon their hearts and their minds to forgive us as we ask that you give us a prayerful mind to seek forgiveness as well as forgiveness and to be able to love and to honor, to stand in the greatness of your mercy and in the power of your might, to be able to declare your word unto all those that love and obey you. As it is written in the word that we were commanded to take this therefore unto all the world, we ask you, Abba Yahweh, to give us both the power 
power and the strength, whatsoever resources in this earth that you command to gather together, that we're able to send forth your word. We ask that you baruch our hands to do that with all of our might, because we remember that it is written in your word that whatsoever you do, do it with all your might. We simply ask you, Abba Yahweh, in Yahshua's precious name, that with all our might, we be granted the ability to serve you, to love you, to honor you, to love all of Israel, to love the stranger that will walk among us in the latter days. We ask you, Abba Yahweh, for your healing, strengthening power, comfort those that may have lost loved ones, comfort those in their hour of need, whatsoever it may be, the homeless, Abba Yahweh, those in prison without doing just cause, those that are sick and suffering, we ask you touch every bone of their body, rejuvenate their power and strength, because we remember that it is written, they that wait upon Yahweh shall renew their strength. For they shall mount up with wings like eagles. And this blessing, Abba Yahweh, we simply ask for all your people, regardless of their race or color. In the precious name of Yahshua, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love you all. Tough night.